Hello everybody, it's Drew from Drew Super's Idiocracy here. Uh, sorry I've been slacking on posting videos. Um, some days I don't know what to really talk about, so I'm like, well, what will I talk about? So I end up waiting so long to decide what to talk about that it's bedtime and then I'm tired. So um, I'm very sorry for um, being such a slacker. Uh, but anyways, what today I wanted to talk about, and this is kind of a taboo subject, so I hope this doesn't um, make any of you unsubscribe or or not like me anymore, but it's just something that I kind of felt like talking about because a lot of my videos here have kind of been either confessionals about my life or, um, you know, sharing kind of some deep stuff. So I decided that this might be a pertinent topic uh, for going along with what I've already done. So, um, it's a little known fact that, um, I was an escort for 11 years. And if you don't know what an escort is, um, it's basically someone who, um, does things of a sexual nature for money. <laughs> um, it's how I survived my twenties by allowing me to party as much as I want and, um, buy all the things that I wanted while only working a part-time job usually most of the time. Um, it was, it's nothing I'm proud of by any means. I'm not proud about it, but I, um, fell into it kind of accidentally and discovered, you know, I liked not having to work hard. I liked, um, being desired in that way that people would pay for it. Um, it just became very addictive. Um, so it was, yeah. And it kind of left me a little sexually damaged as well. And I, um, really regret it <laughs> a lot because, um, how I've, how I've come out on the other end has just been not so great. <laughs> But I fell into it because I, I went to school for massage therapy, legit massage therapy. And I um, ended up not being able to get a good job after I got out of school. And I had this friend that I knew very briefly. I was talking about it when we went out to lunch one time. And he was like, well, why don't you do massages in the nude? It's like, it, it'll you know increase people wanting to do massages with you and stuff like that. So I did. And not, well... Not to say nothing sexual happened. I mean, it was definitely a, a happy ending situation. But um, I didn't have sex with anybody because that's that I was adamant. No sex. And people still wanted to get massages from me because, one, I gave great massages. Not to toot my own horn, but I had a lot of repeat customers um, because they liked my massages. And then the rest was just bonus. Um Eventually, after maybe a year, year and a half, two years, somewhere in there, um, someone offered for me to go to the full enchilada and they wanted to pay and they would pay double what I was charging for uh, just the massage and the nude. Um, so I went for it and I started doing a post where I were, it was full escorting. And I made so much more money per client that I was just like, well, I guess this is the thing I'm going to do now. Um, I, uh, I don't like that I was that weak when it came to money, but as someone who didn't have money growing up, it was nice to suddenly have this huge influx of cash. And I didn't really use it for drugs in the beginning. It wasn't until after my first time in rehab that I really started using the money for drugs. I used it on myself. I bought lots of nice clothes. I bought um, artwork. I bought, well, alcohol too. And I'd go out with my friends. Because my friends and I, we would drink at least three, four times a week and get obliterated. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't had that influx of money. I'm not saying that that's okay within itself, because it's not. I was drinking way too heavily. Um, but it allowed me to 
have a lifestyle like my friends who are working real-time jobs and making lots of money. So, um, it was... Oh, let me, let me stop right there. Aaron, if you're watching this, please don't say anything to mom and dad. Um, it's just going to create more problems for me. Um, so if you can, please keep this to yourself if you're watching. Um, I am not, like I said, I'm not proud about it. I have been left very damaged um, after the fact. And it just kind of came to the point where uh, the reason why I quit was because I was sick of only being desired for sex. And so I quit, and sadly, nothing changed. Um, I tried to date guys, um, and that's all that they wanted, or people would say they wanted to be friends with me, but they had ulterior motives like to, for that to happen, and it was just really, really heartbreaking to realize that my entire life, I have only really been desired for one thing. And I, I, I'm not saying all have been like that, but a very large number of even guys I dated or were boyfriends with just wanted me because they liked how I looked. Drinking my iced tea. And that's the tea, hunty. Um, anyways, um, I don't know how long this video is going to go because I, I thought I could talk about it a little bit longer, but at almost seven minutes, I'm not sure exactly what to say about it. Um, I guess I could talk about experiences that I had, but that was kind of sound like I'm bragging about it. Um, I'd say primarily 80 to 90% of my clients I would have had sex with for free. Um... But there were those that were just kind of green and bear it kind of times. Um, I had one guy fly me to New Orleans to where he lived. So he paid for my plane ticket, flew me there, paid me $1,000, and we didn't even have sex. <laughs> um, I think he just wanted to go, because then we, while I was there, we went out to all the gay bars. And one, of his, one was his spot. And... We spent a lot of the time there. I think he just wanted to have a good looking guy be out in public with him. So it was very nice <laughs> to, to do that. And I, it made me feel good that somebody wanted to fly me somewhere um, to, to visit them. Um, so that was a big ego boost at the time, for sure. Um, just one second. London fog. Um, anyways, I had a lot of customers, and this is what's terrible. Um, and it makes this is what I feel the most guilt about. I had a lot of customers that were quote unquote straight married men. Um, and so basically, I contributed to these men cheating on their wives. And um, at the time, I thought it was kind of hot. But looking back, it's like I slept with a philanderer who was going behind his wife's back. And if that happened to me, I would be heartbroken. So heartbroken. So it's just... When you're in the moment, things don't really occur to you, especially how, with how young I was. But now, on the on looking back at it from the quote unquote outside, um, or after the fact, whatever you want to say, it's just I really wish I would have been a little bit more discerning and selective. Yeah, I wouldn't have made as much money, but it was it was just. I did so much bad, so much bad, um, doing that. And it's just, for the longest time, it was hard to like hold my head up high and look at myself in the mirror and not be disgusted. Ooh, excuse me. Sorry, I just had dinner. 
Uh, excuse me again. Um, sorry, that was really gross. Um, but um, I just look back on it all and have these feelings of guilt and shame and wish I hadn't done it. You know, like, I wish I would just try harder to find a massage therapy job that paid well enough that I could support myself instead of caving and um, doing what I did. Um, unless my sister watches this, my none of my family know. Um, it's not anything I want them to ever know. Um, so, of course, I don't want them to know it. I'm going to put it out on the internet. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but I really hate that this is part of my story. Um, it makes me afraid to date people because um, I feel like I need to be honest with them because it's affected me in, in ways that would affect them. Um, so it's, it's difficult to try to bring that up after I've been dating with somebody, dating somebody for a little while and be like, Hey, by the way, I used to have sex for money. Um, you know, it's, it's not easy to bring that up. Um, the fact that I have health concerns like HIV, um, also play into that with dating people. So it's just like one more added piece of baggage that a person is going to have to be okay with for them to be with me. So um, for about the last 10 years, I've only dated uh, two guys um, after my, well, the, the last relationship that I had two years ago or 10 years ago ended really badly. And he knew that I was an escort. And he forced me to get a full-time job so I wouldn't have to do that. It was my first full-time job. Um, but it just became this thing where I resented him. He didn't want me to sleep around. And I ended up doing it anyways behind his back. Um, he never knew. Even after we broke up, I never was like, hey, well, I did this. Um, but it's just... It's been a very, it's played heavily into me being with somebody. Um, even now after the fact, because I tried to date, sorry, I've dated three guys since Mark and I broke up 10 years ago. And um, the most recent one was very understanding about it. I told him, I don't even know if I told him before our first date, but he was so understanding about all of my baggage. But we discovered that we weren't compatible in the bedroom. And at that time, it was very important for me to get some, to find somebody who I wouldn't have to do things that I didn't want to do when I didn't want to do them. Um, and I know that's very vague and I don't really want to go into it because that's not what I'm talking about. But he was very accepting of all my baggage and it made me feel so good. But I know that that's not what the bulk of the gay community are going to be like when they, if, if they were to find that out about someone they, they were seeing. Um, but I know not all guys are shallow like that. It's just hard to trust that people aren't going to hold that against me or, you know, lord, lord it over me. Like, oh, well, you know, if... You don't do this when I tell people that you're that you were an escort or something like that. Like, because I've had friends find out. I don't know how they found out, but they found out, and one of them stopped being friends with me. Um, and he wouldn't tell me how he knew. He was protecting his other friend who told him. I'm like, I don't care who it is. I'm not going to go after them. I just want to know who knows my business and how they know it. Um, but. It's not, it's neither here nor there. Um, it was definitely that guy's loss for not wanting to be friends with me anymore. Um, after the fact, maybe like a year, he claims that's not why we stopped being friends. But that was the last time that we, he and I ever talked was talking about that. And then 
he stopped inviting me out. We stopped hanging out. And so it only stands to reason that, um, that that's why he stopped being my friend. Um, and at that time, I had already quit. Um, so it was just, he found out that I used to, and it bugged him. So I'm fearful that that could be what a lot of, how a lot of people react. Um, you know, like I said, I'm disgusted with myself. I feel ashamed. Um, I feel guilty. But, you know, the only ways I can rectify that is to not be like that in the future, I guess. You know, one, I, 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 don't, I don't have an escort body anymore, so that helps. <laughs> and I would never be tempted to go back, pri primarily because I discovered how shitty it made me feel that people only wanted to be with me in that way, doing that. And it just got to where I was using the money for drugs in the end when I did get it, and... It was just not healthy for me anymore. So, um, given all of those things into one big enchilada, I was like, okay, I have to quit. I can't do this. I cannot do this. So, I quit, and I'm now left with the pieces of my worthiness um, to be with somebody, um, broken worthiness, um, broken sexuality, um, sexual desire. Um, it's just, I am very shattered when it comes to things, especially in the bedroom or being with people in any way. And it's, I just, I don't feel very positive sexually. I know I've mentioned here in the past on videos that I, Think I might be asexual, um, which doesn't make sense by the fact that I used to have a lot of sex, like a lot, a lot, a lot, um, for money. Um, but something's happened to me, and I'm not a very sexual being anymore. It's been going on for about three years, and um, my therapist thinks I'm just I have a mental block due to things that have happened to me of sexual, of a sexual nature, but, um, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, but I know, I mean, I can probably say for sure that the escorting stuff on my mind and everything that happened to me because of that definitely probably does play a little bit of a part, but, um, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say. Um, what's causing me to feel this way. And I just wish it would go away. And um, we've ne my therapist and I usually talk about my addiction issues and not those issues, um, which maybe the next time I see her, I'm going to request that we, um, that we uh, talk um, about some of that stuff because it's really bugging me Excuse me, I burped again. Oh, that's so gross. Ugh. So I don't know if I've ever burped this much on camera. I mean, I've talked about boogers and blood in that one video, but I don't ever remember burping on camera. I probably have. But um, I'm talking about something serious, so to be like, <gasps> is just, you know, you know. Um, I don't know. I think, I think I've talked about all the points of this that I really can without going into extreme detail of things with specific guys, which I don't want to share that because, you know, um, it's like I'm, I can't think of even how to, how to say this. It's like I'm um, reliving no, not reliving. That sounds... I'm going over something from my past that is of no importance. Um, and talking about it like it's something that is important. So, um, 
I just, things I did mention, just I was saying as to how it made me feel and things like that. Um, but I don't, I never really had any horror stories. Um, there were just times that were really weird. Um, and I'd say those are probably the, the 20 to 10% of the time that I wouldn't have slept with the person for free. Um, so it's just, it is what it is. I can't change it. So the only way to, what to do is to heal and move on, but I don't know how to heal and move on. You know, it's, because we have talked about it with my therapist and, you know, nothing really came of it. My therapist, like I said, she doesn't think I'm asexual, but that's how I feel these days. You know, I, I, I feel attraction to guys, but, um, the man downstairs doesn't show it, if that makes sense. So it's just, um, I don't know, there's a lot of things about me that I wish I could change. And this is definitely near the top, if not the top spot, you know, um, no, I guess the top spot would be that I wish I could change that I was a drug addict, uh, an alcoholic. Um, and then probably under that would be escorting. Um, but I have to look at it for what it was. It allowed me to live a lifestyle that um, I liked. I didn't hurt anybody. Um, nobody hurt me. Um, but like I said, the ones that were hurt were the wives of the men that were married. And um, at the time, it didn't bother me. And now it does. Um, so it's just, I guess I've grown up um, and have stopped looking for the easy way out when it comes to money, which when I first stopped was really hard. It was so hard to go from making a um, thousand to 2000 a week um, to making at most a little over a hundred a week. I, I, I just, it was hard to, to adjust to. Um, Cause I just, I was always used to having a lot of money, a lot of money. Like over that 11 years, I mean, I I would like to know exactly how much I made just to have the number, just to know. But I mean, I can tell you there were, there were times where I had to cancel on clients because I was just, it was like four times a day is just too much, <laughs> you know? Um, and at $200, I could afford to cancel one client, um, you know, and I just, and, that's, and when I say 1000 to 2000 it's a, definitely a lot closer to 2000 a week now that I think about it. Um, and it just became a thing. It just... You know, I got addicted to the money specifically, you know, um, knowing that I was getting paid for what I was doing, like it was a turn on, it was a major turn on and I just got addicted to that. The, the feeling of being desired and making money for something that I would, that I would do anyway, was just so sultry looking to me. Um, and I don't know, I'm glad that I changed in the way that I did because, well, one, I, I didn't, I stopped having a, a body that people would pay for. <laughs> and, um, I guess that was kind of a blessing too. Um, I just had to stop it all and I'm glad that I did. I, I'd hate to think where I would be right now if I was a 35 year old um, escort instead of, because I stopped when I was like 31 or so, 32. Um, so it's, it's been a hot second since I quit. And um, it's just, I, 
have a lot of regrets and one regret that I don't have is quitting. Um, when I quit, it was very empowering, but like I said, um, after that, I would try to date and guys would only want to be with me for sex and people would try to be my friends or say that they were being like wanting to be a friend and then I'd come to discover they were just into me for sexual stuff as well. It just became very heartbreaking that my whole adult life up to that point was just, I was seen as a sexual object. And I allowed myself to. I, I'm not saying those guys did me wrong. I mean, I put myself in that situation to be hurt. And um, so I just didn't think of the ramifications coming out on the other side. I, I couldn't imagine that I would ever feel the way that I felt about what I was doing. You know, at the time I was just like, I ain't making easy money, you know? And um, one time I had, I was out with a friend, we were out at the bars and one of my clients, he and I are still friends, we're, but we're just friends. Um, he texted me and asked if I could come over. And um, I went over, I left my friend at the bar and I came back and my friend just knew. He just knew for like, he's like, that's really weird that you would leave the bar just to go have a quick hookup. And so um, we ended up talking about it and I told him how much I made for what I did. And he was blown away. And now he used to be a porn actor. So he understands, um, you know, doing things of a sexual nature for money. So I wasn't, you know, it wasn't grotesque to him to find that out. But um, he was just blown away that I could make that much for what I did. <laughs> so, um, London Fog. Um, and I, um, yeah. I know I said I wasn't going to specific stories, but um, I guess I was just trying to say not everybody thought it was gross or I, I didn't lose all my friends that found out. But um, it was just, if anybody in my life has an inkling that I did that, they have not said a single word to me. So um, we will have to see what um, this video brings into my life, but you know, I'm not going to hide it if, if it ever comes out. Um, I think the sec being so secretive about it has also played a part in how bad it makes me feel. Excuse me, not that I'd ever brag to my parents like, oh, hey, you know, I'm having money or I'm, I'm having sex for money, you know. Um, back when I was still doing it, I mean, so, um, there are things that need to be kept secret and there are things that a secret will weigh you down. And this is one of those secrets that's weighing me down. So as I said at the beginning, I hope nobody thinks any less of me. Um, if you do, you have moral issues with it. I understand. I'm not going to be upset if you unsubscribe from me, um, I just hope that this is maybe a learning thing for some people. I know most of my, my subscribers are over the age of 40 and are women, so this won't really um, apply to you. Um, but I know I do have younger um, viewers as well. So hopefully this is a an eye-opener of things, especially for young gay men, because it is very tempting to, to do things like this. Even once can mess you up. Um, and I think 11 years of it should be a very big eye opener and say, for, for me to say, I regret all of it. Um, I regret it all. So, all right. Well, I feel like I'm starting to talk in circles now and it's about 30 minutes of video. So, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Um, I want to thank you all for sitting on this um, ride with me on this video. If you've watched this far, um, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.